So if you can all hear me, um, so welcome everyone to today's HRA BioNet Fogarty Collaborative Research Seminar. My name is Rolanda and as HRA Africa Training Coordinator, I'll be chairing the session for today. So there's just a few housekeeping issues. Um, we're waiting for our second presenter to join, but he might have connectivity issues. Um, if he should join, then we will have to speak. If not, have faces speaking only. Um, questions will be taken at the end of the presentations. You're welcome to type your questions in the chat box. Please just make sure that it is clear to who your question is directed at. You're also welcome to use your audio and ask your questions. Please just raise your hand, your electronic hand, <laughs> to alert, alert us when you do, when you do that. So um, I'll take this opportunity for Festus to get ready um, to share his screen. And then in the meantime, I can introduce him. All right. So Festus is um, an MSc student and he's based at Pony University and part of the EANBIT project. So Festus, um, Thanks for joining, for presenting for us today. Um, and I'm gonna hand over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rolanda, for the introduction. Today, I'm going to take you through my MSc project an expanded motif assessment and ranking tools for human and insect research. Gene regulation in living organism is a complex network of interdependent processes. It involves a lot of different mechanisms and organelles. At the core heart of the system lies the process of mRNA transcription, which is governed by transcription factors. So what are transcription factors? These are proteins which bind to specific DNA region known as transcription factor binding sites or motifs. And there's quite a huge challenge in discovering these regions, these motifs in the genome. So basically, let me just put on my point. Okay, it's okay. So basically, I hope you can see my mouse pointer. The DNA binds to the transcription factor here and find the region where the transcription factor binds to the DNA. You sequence the region. And then from the sequence region, now you can do an alignment. The alignment is used to calculate the binding energy of the transcription factor to the motif. And then from this, now you can predict the binding energy of the motif of the transcription factor to the motif. There are different techniques which have been used to perform these studies whereby it will select these motifs. There is the chipsec, which is in the in vivo binding of the transcription factor to the motif. There is the HT selects now, which is the in vitro, and then there is protein binding microarray PBM now, which uses the different data. Here is an example of the HT selects whereby we have the transcription factor, it binds to the genome. This sequence is regioned, and then the end binding energy is calculated. From then, we can find the motif where the transcription factor binds onto. So these motifs actually bind to conserved patterns the DNA sequence, and then the motifs once you elucidate them or once we find them, we can now use them to to model the binding energy of the transcription factor using different computational techniques which are available and tools. The main problem is there are over 200 tools which have been used for motif discovery. And these, 200, these tools actually use different kind of data sets and algorithms. And there's a wide cloud of just a few of the tools which have been out there used for motif discovery. And some of them have been reviewed in the, in the citations below here. The main challenge arises whereby each of these tools actually gives out a, a different version of the motif for the same transcription factor. Here's just a, a picture to show different variants of the HNF4 transcription factor generated by the different algorithms. This presents a researcher with a dilemma on finding which one is the best motif for a given transcription factor. So with this challenge, in 2018, Kibet and Mechanic developed a tool motif assessment and ranking suite with the whole aim of evaluating these motif models, assessing them and ranking them to find biologically relevant motifs for a given transcription factor. This is an overview of the tool. We have the front end here for the web server. 
whereby the end user puts in the transition factor name or motifs if they have them. And here we have the backend. I have lost my point. Okay, here we have the backend, which contains the motifs for the given transcription factor and a benchmark data set for the given transcription factor. It employs three tools, the consistency-based mass, the scoring and classification-based mass, and the enrichment-based mass. And these different tools have different algorithms as shown here in this circle, which are used for different evaluations. For the CB mass, actually here we compare now the motifs available for the given transcription factor against each other. We see how, which one is the best performing motif. For the scoring and classification mass, we use the algorithms now to compare the motifs against a benchmark data set to find which is the best performing motif. And for the enrichment based mass now, here we find which motifs are enriched against the benchmark data set. However, there are some research gaps which, are, which arose during the usage of the tool. And some of them is the benchmark data set is incomplete. When I say it is incomplete, during the development of the tool, there are not quite a lot of chipset data available in the public, in the public eye. And currently we have a lot of experiments even from the ENCODE itself. A lot of them have been generated which are available and in other different databases. And the tool is currently limited to the human research only, but it can be explored for other organisms. And that, that's one thing we maybe want to incorporate it to be used for different organisms. And again, when the tool currently has been using an older version of the human genome, HG19, but currently we have the HG38 genome, which is available. So we intend to upgrade the tool. And finally, just to comment on the benchmark data from the other sources is not uniformly processed. So we'd want a uniform processing pipeline for the data sets which, which are collected from other sources. So from those research gaps, we had our objective to expand the benchmark data set and scale mass to be relevant in assessing and ranking motifs and evaluate transcription factor models for insects. The specific, the specific objective being collecting chipset data and develop a uniform analysis pipeline, and then to expand the benchmark data set using chipset data and motif data. And finally, update the server with, with benchmark data and modules for insects using the model organism Drosophila melanogaster. So here we start with our methodology. First of all, was to collect the motifs from different sources and publications. So we are collected mostly Drosophila data. Drosophila data is recent data, only new data which is not available in the platform. So we collected Drosophila data from the databases listed here. And for the human data, we collected data from those databases which were used previously and have been updated and or databases which are not in the database before. The motifs were collected in different formats, but our main format we use in the tool is mean format. So if the motif is not in the mean format, we converted it into the mean format using custom scripts or the mean suit. And then after conversion, the motifs were stored in an SQL table. For the chipset data, we collected data from different sources, from the ENCODE, for human data, mod ENCODE and modern. We collected also for the Drosophila data, and it is important to note data from ENCODE, Mod ENCODE, and Modern. We collected peaks because the data from these data databases are uniformly processed. We went ahead to collect public publicly available data from geo datasets, whereby we collected experimental session and metadata, and it is. Useful to know that data from geo data sets is in a form of human readable format, thus making it hard to pass it programmatically to extract important details which we want. So we have to perform to make to make modules to do the job for us. And then once we get the metadata of interest, we could download raw reads from the sequence reader archives for analysis in the chipset pipeline. Here's an example of I, I metadata from the geo data sets. So this is a pre-processing pipeline for the experiments collected outside ENCODE. First of all, we developed a module which utilizes the NCBI entrance rules to do the searching of the chipset data we were from the geodata sets. And we did this on the specified dates for Drosophila and human. So we found 638 experiments for Drosophila and for the human we found 
approximately 5,700 ex- 5, experiments. And our first step was to develop a module to clean up these experiments. Some of these experiments had mixed data with RNA-seq data because all of them involved different genes. So we had to remove other data which is not cheat check data and remain with only experiments which have cheat check data only. We did that as our first step of the pre-processing pipeline. And then the next step followed was now to split the different targets in each experiment which have been employed to do the cheat check experiment. And this, we developed a module to do that. So whereby we ended up with a total of 733 targets, all of them for Drosophila and 9,543 targets for human. But it is important to note, not all of them were transcription factor targets. So for our study, we aimed at transcription factor targets. So we had to do a manual curation whereby we drop any other target which is not a transcription factor. And we remained with a total of 393 experiments for Drosophila and 5,172 for humans, which are now to be analyzed using a chip sick pipeline. In our, in our pipeline, we employed the ENCODE chip sick analysis pipeline because of its uniformity and robustness. So this is just an overview of the pipeline. First of all, the on the line. Depending on whether the experiment had replicates or did not have replicates, that's from that's now whereby they divide into two for the replicated experiments that they are used a different pipeline and unreplicated a different pipeline and this is because at the stage of the reproducible discovery rate this is whereby they compare the different replicates within an experiment in the case of the unreplicated to discover if there is reproducibility across the experiments we went there to do a, a database upgrade to first, first to incorporate the new organisms which we have we want to add to the mass tools. So and the main thing we did here is to add the organism relation table. This organism relation table now allows us to expand the tool into different organisms as it links to the transcription factor for the, for the organism. And the transcription factor now links to the benchmark data sets and the motifs available for that transcription factor. Now, with the addition of the organism, it means that the tool could be scalable. Now, oh, upgrading the tool from, previously the tool was developed in on Python 2 platform, which was the main programming at that time, but currently it has been depreciated and there is Python 3, so we had to port the tool from Python 2 to Python 3, update all the requirements and dependencies, which was quite a task. And also we updated the major tool dependencies, which are MIM from version 4.0 to 5.1, and GIMI motifs from version 0.10 to 0.14. And this port here is self-explanatory of the challenges which I faced during updating of the tool. So to our results, first of all, I start with the motif collection. So for the human, we had motif collection of about 12,400 motifs. And the distribution to different databases is shown here, the greatest contributor being the CSDP database. And on the right, we can see the distribution according to transcription factor families. And you can see there are families which are consistent across the different databases, including the basic domain, and then we have the helix and helix domain and then the zinc domain. You can see they are, they are distributed almost in each and every database. Again, for the insect now, we collected the motifs and you can see those families are also consistent here. You can see the basic domain here, helix and helix domain and the zinc here. Probably maybe it is transcription factors which belong to these families are more studied compared to others. And you can see also our main contributor of the motifs for Drosophila was CSDB database, followed by Fly Vector. And for the Drosophila, we had about 2,900 motifs available for, for, our, for our benchmark data sets. For the Chipsec data, data sets, we collected a total of 812 now processed PIC files from the three databases for Drosophila and around 6,800 big files for humans which have been processed. So we went ahead to now do 
an evaluation study. We selected one transition factor for Drosophila. And the basis of selecting this transition factor because it was one which had the most motifs at 46. And also the benchmark data set, at least we had five different experiments with benchmark data sets for this motif. That's why we selected it to check out how does the tool perform against the Drosophila data. So the first thing we did was to do the CB mass whereby comparing motifs against each other using the tom the tom, -tom algorithm. And here is whereby one motif is compared to the rest, and then the score each scores after comparing is average, and then motifs are ranked based on the average. So the average column is the first column here, and these motifs are ranked based on this column. And you can see there are two clear clusters here. There is this cluster of motif, which is clustering here, and another one here. So using this approach is mainly important when you don't have benchmark data set available in your ranking of motifs. You can only compare the motifs themselves to see which one is the best performing. We went ahead to do an enrichment-based mass and you use the Centrim algorithm, whereby when I say enrichment is whereby we are using the motif to see if it is enriched on our test data compared to a, a negative or control sequences. So if it is enriched, the score is usually higher like one is good, it's good enrichment, when it's zero, it means that it, the motif is not enriched. And from this, you could see a peculiar pattern whereby for each data set available, we we'll see there's at least one motif which is enriched well, but for the others, they're not enriched well. But again, you observe for the data sets on the first column here, you could see some motifs are also enriched. So this raised the question, why don't we see uh, this the rest of these motifs being enriched. So we went ahead to do this scoring and classification based mass using the GOMA scoring function and the AUC statistics. And when I say the AUC statistics is the area under the receiver operator curve and ability of the motif to classify the two sets of data. We use the positive set, which is our test set, and a control set, which is our negative set. So the score basically you'd love to see is a score close to one here that shows the motif scores well in that benchmark data set. And when the score is zero, that means the motif doesn't perform really well. You cannot classify the two data sets and it is by chance that it binds to the test set. So here in our observation, we made observation that our scores were not really that close to one as we would expect when we we're using with the human data. So this also left us with the question, what could be happening with this transcription factor? But again, looking on the second panel here, we can see there is no good correlation between the two, the different GSEC data, data sets from collected, which are available from the database. Ideally, you would think because they are from the same transcription factor, they should have a good correlation, correlating to each other because they could be enriched, all of them. So we went ahead to find why are we seeing no scores for this transition factor. So first thing we went to, to find out is the gene expression in Drosophila. And this was really a good figure which I found from this publication by Abetman et al. And I'd like you to focus on the panel B of it. On this panel B, there are different developmental stages of the Drosophila. We have the embryo, larva, and adult. And then on the y axis, are there are different genes which are expressed by, which are expressed, and they're showing the expression profile from, and on here you can see there is, I, I, I about to show you how the expression is. So basically, when it is blue, it means the expression is low, and when it's yellow, it means it's out. So if, for example, we take our gene to be here, it means our gene is expressed highly during the early embryo stages, but when it grows, as it grows, the gene now is reduced at low levels. So if we assume, we take this concept for our data, assuming that data was collected at the embryo stage. So if we take like, the data was collected at this point, and then at this point, and this point for the peak first, that means the enrichment here would be really good for the motifs compared to the enrichment which you see on the adults. Again, for a select motif, we find out 
there are some of the transition factors which would have alternative splicing and a good example is the lola motif transcription factor which is selected and we found out it had 19 different variants of the transcription factor this would present a challenge in that finding how if the chief check data was now from used the the t the variant of the transcription factor used to get the chief check data different from the one used to get the motif also would mean that our uh, scoring or enrichment based approach will not really give us the best results. So we went ahead to explore our data, what would be happening. So yeah, these are the chipset experiments we had from our data set on the table below here. And you could see the developmental stages. We had at, at least three different developmental stages. That is the larva stage, embryo stage at 0 to 12 hours, and the embryo stage at 12 to 24 hours. All these could be factors affecting the different ranking of the motifs when you're using the, the SC mass. And then we also found out that one of them also, you, the chipset data was used by a different variant compared to the rest. This could mean that when you put all these factors into place, this for this a specific transition factor, it could be affected by the developmental stage, or it could be affected by the variant which is used to get the chipset data. Also, there could be other external factors which could affect this motif ranking. Maybe this transcription factor binds indirectly to the sequence, and that one now brings a challenge in that you can, there's no direct binding. Thus, the enrichment score this will be will be low. Again, also could also factor in other data set, other factors like the source of the data which was used to sequence this experiments could be a factor in this. So with that, we are left with maybe now, let's check out how does the scoring correlate between the GIMI scoring and assessed by score. Let's say before, the GIMI tool was updated from version 0 0.10 to version 0 0.14. And with that came a lot of changes. So we wanted to compare how does the scoring uh, occur, perform compared to our assessed by score. So we selected all of us, all of our scoring functions. We got, we used two statistics. That is the AUC and the MNCP. And the MNCP is the mean normalized condition of probability. It ranks the statistics of the motif based on the occupancy of the score. And the higher the occupancy in a random set and test out if it is performing really well. And then we have, for the GIMI now, they have a new scoring function the precision recall area under the curve. So we compared this precision recall with the MNCP and for the AUC, we compared just the same AUC in our tool. And you could see there is a positive correlation in most of the transcription factors when you use energy and gamma scoring, which is the preferred method of scoring on your, in the tool. But for one transition factor, USP we did not, we found a peculiar observation which we really need to investigate into that. And of importance is to note for the log scoring functions, that is the sum log and the max log, we see negative correlation in most of the transition factors. And this could be related to early observation that the sum log, the log scoring functions, they don't discriminate well the positive and the negative sequences. Thus, the, the results are not really reliable. We went ahead now to test the effect of the statistics on the different scoring function. So when I say statistics, these are some of the metrics which are used to score the motifs and then used to rank them. So we have the, in the tool we employ the AUC, MNCP, Pearson, and Spearman. So we wanted to compare how do these statistics perform. So what we did, we took normalized scores for each transcription factor, and then we took the standard deviation of the maximum normalized score, which is represented as error bars here. And these error bars show how unreliable a statistic is in ranking the motifs for a given transcription factor. And in majority of the scoring function and transcription factors, we found that the Pearson and Spearman correlation are really not very reliable for ranking motifs. And we would prefer to use AUC or MNCP because they are quite stable and they are not really affected. So finally, what we did, we wanted to compare the scoring functions between themselves to see how they work or how they correlate with each other. We use the Spearman correlation. 
and a score of close to one shows the, there is a good correlation, while a score closer to zero so shows there is a poor correlation. So on the first panel, we show the scoring functions correlation using the AUC statistics, and on the second panel, using the MC, MNCT statistics, which is found to be more stable. And you can see from this, it is clear that the the log scoring function, that is the sum log and the max log, they, are no, they don't really correlate well with the rest of the scoring functions. That's because maybe they have their less discriminative power when they used against a positive and negative sequence scoring. So from this, we at least had an overview of what we have done. And just to conclude, we have expanded the benchmark data sets for human by a twofold for Matthews and an eight for CheatSec data. This means we have a robust data set for assessment and ranking of motifs for human. Again, we also developed a workflow for uniform processing data from different sources. That means we will eliminate variations which would result from different peak colors for the benchmark data sets. Having a, a uniform pipeline, that means you eliminate the variations. And also, we populated the tool with the benchmark data for Drosophila. That means we are providing the first assessment tool for Drosophila insect data. And again, we need to fine tune it to so that we can see how it works against all the available transcription factor for Drosophila. We find how the scores are. And I'd like to acknowledge my supervisors, Dr. Caleb Kibet, Dr. Dan Masiga, the bioinformatics team at ICPE. Professor Philip Mechanic for their assistance in this project. I also like to thank my host institution, Puan University, ENB, and ICPE for the support, and also like to thank IDEAL and NIH for the financial support in this project. Thank you, and I welcome your questions. Thank you so much, Faces, for such a nice presentation. So our next speaker um, seems to have connection issues. So I think we'll go straight into questions from here. Um, so the floor is open for those who would like um, to ask Professor some questions, please. You're also welcome to post the question in the chat box. Right, if it's, it's quiet, I'll, I'll start and <laughs> pose a question to, to faces. It won't be very complicated. I was just interested when you said um, you have to do a lot of, because the data in the different databases are not uniform, you have to do transformation. How long does it take for you to, for example, transform one, date, one database's data set in terms of like, the time. Good. Okay. Obviously, it depends on how much you're using from a database. Thank you for the question. Now, for the motifs from the different databases, it, it all depends on what kind of format they are in. So they could be in forms of sequences, PFM, that is, that means they are in position frequencies. And also it depends on the number of motifs. There are some which could be a thousand or maybe more than a thousand, others would be a hundred. So you have to find the, the right algorithm which you use to convert into the mean format. And in some cases you have to just convert into an intermediate format for you to now to convert them into the mean format. So there's no specific time it will take you to convert. So it all depends with the, it is tailored the conversion is tailored to the database where you collected the motifs from and how the data it looks like. So you have to find if you have to make custom scripts to convert it into an intermediate format and then now use some of the meme suit conversion scripts to convert it now into the meme format. Wow, sure. So it, it, it appears it can take quite some time. Yeah. Spaces. Anybody else with a question? Hello. Yes, please, John, go ahead. Thanks, Festas, for a nice talk. 
So one of the uh, research group that you pointed out, the different versions uh, will give you different motives. So have you con tried to compare your your <coughs> program with other tools and how do these compare? Thank you, John, for your question. So the, for the other tools which I mentioned here, those are tools which are used for motif discovery. And here we are doing a motif assessment. Now after they have been discovered, you want to compare those motifs discovered by the different tools. How do they now rank? Are they consistent or concordant in, in the results they get? So you want to compare to find out which is the best motif for a given transcription factor. So all you are doing is collecting these motifs from the different tools tools which have been elucidated by the different tools and then now rank all those motifs to find which one is the best performing or which one could be reliable biologically okay thanks any more questions Right, Professor, it seems um, you've blown everybody away and the presentation was very, very clear. So I don't want to um, keep us all up. If there aren't any more questions for Faces, then I'm going to call this meeting to a close today um, as we will reschedule with our second speaker who unfortunately couldn't make it for today. And then I'll just want to say thank you very much for all of you that um, attended today. And thank you so much for Fess for taking the time um, to give us this riveting presentation about his work. Thank you everyone for coming in. And thank you for taking your time to listen to me. All right, thank you everyone. And I'll adjourn this meeting. Thanks, bye.